Hi all, today we are doing section 6.2, that is chapter 6, section 2, the difference of squares factoring pattern. And tonight's homework is going to be to page 268, 1 through 76 odd. These are quick questions, so it shouldn't take you that long. All right, let's get started with a little bit of a warm up. Okay, let's take a minute, and I'd like you guys to um, double distribute out. Now let's check our work. So if you remember when we first learned we were double distributing and we learned that we'd get x squared first and then I do um, my outside is here is negative 9x, my inside is here positive 9x and my last is here. We remember it becomes not negative 9. Now, what ends up happening with this pattern is that our inner and outer terms ends up end up canceling out because negative 9x, positive 9x. So, our answer really when we simplify this is x squared minus 9. So the question is why don't we go straight for that shortcut? We know that for x squared, we basically had to square that first term. So here, I'm going to square m squared. And then we know that the last term also, we square that last term, which is 9. And notice the pattern. It becomes a negative 9. Okay? Hopefully you got the next one, which is y squared minus 100. And the next one is t squared minus 64. Now, the only time you multiply binomial by binomial that you get two terms, another binomial, is when you have this difference of squares pattern. Okay? It is the only time. Other than that, anytime we multiply a binomial times a binomial, we will get at least a trinomial. Okay? Now what is happening here is our inner and outer terms are canc are getting canceled out. All right, so instead of doing that, when we factor, we actually start with our product and we figure out what are the two quantities that multiply together, our factors. So when you get that difference of squares, remember, it's pretty easy. If you notice you only have two terms, and it's a perfect square, a different sign, and a perfect square, then all we have to do is really take the square root of that. That's an x. What's the square root of that? It's a 9. Remember, we're going to have two binomials that are exactly the same. One will be positive, and the other will be negative. Okay, let's try one more. I'm going to do m... And the square root of 49 is 7. One's a plus and one's a minus. So what we have are two factors, right? Factor times factor equals product. Okay, factors are quantities that divide evenly. Okay, pause the recording and try 3 through 7. Now let's check our work. So the next one you should have had y minus 10, y plus 10, t plus 8, t minus 8, x minus y, y minus, uh, x plus y, sorry. Keep it in the order that the binomial comes in. So, for instance, don't just turn it into standard form. Keep it here. It's going to be easier for you later. Um, four, the square root of 16 is 4, so 4 plus k and 4 minus k. The next one is going to be p plus 1, p minus 1. Now, whether we put p minus 1 or plus 1, um, it doesn't matter the order. I usually like to put my p minus 1 to the outside because we're going to have, um, we're going to keep building on this. You'll see. All right. So, when we factor, when we factor, you are writing this down. Okay? You are writing this down in your notes. Um, I'm actually going to have you
Let's actually take a minute to maybe write this entire list. And then when you're done, um, let's take a minute to write the entire list. And then when you're done, I want you to draw a line and just take a minute and, and write this, this list. Okay, go. All right, now I want you to draw a line and after you draw that line right here, you're gonna write again, right? So here they are. Over here, let's call this difference of squares. And then we're gonna start getting into it, okay? Put some examples there, difference of squares. Okay, so today we are learning our difference of squares. Okay, now a difference of squares is um, when we factor this, we get something like this, and we call it a difference of squares because what we start with, or the product, is a perfect square, a different sign, and a perfect square. So, um, you know what, I did say we're gonna do an example. Let's go right for the perfect squares. This is very important that we get to memorize our perfect squares. Now you should have them memorized up through 144, but after that, I'm gonna ask that you memorize them through, tw through like 20. I'll give them up to you to um, 25. All right, so first, our first perfect square starts, square starts at zero. Zero is a perfect square. Let's add that to the list. I haven't, it's not written in my list, but it is a perfect square. One, the next one would be four. Two squared is four. The next one, three squared is nine. 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 9 squared, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, 144. Now, these are the ones that are new that you have to go home and get memorized. Should take you about five minutes a night. Spend some time, put them on, on, on flashcards, and get these learned because I'm telling you they're going to save you time in spares, in spades. Um, 13 squared is 169. 14 squared is the reverse, 196. 15 squared ends in a 5, two, oops. 15 squared ends in a 5, which would be 225. 16 squared it is 256. Um, 16, 17 squared is 289. 18 squared is 324. 19 squared is 361. 20 squared is 400. Um, 21 squared is 441. Let's see if I can get you to 22. Um, these numbers, oh, 484 and 20. is 529 and 24 squared is 576 I believe and 25 squared is 625 now let's see 24 times 24 so I will tell you that I've got like probably these memorized once we start working on this, I'll remember now these three. But really, you have to know at least to 20 squared, and you should know 25 squared. Um, if you can get these memorized, especially, you know, it's really going to help out because these numbers come up and we have to factor them. And for you to sit there when you have 576, if you have it memorized, it's going to be like that, like a multiplication table. But if you look at it, it looks like a very big number. So the bare minimum you should really be memorizing to is through 21 squared, and you should also know 25 squared. Okay, so every night, 
I may even have, I think I'm going to have a quiz tomorrow on perfect squares. I don't know if I can do that. i got to figure that one out. Okay, so let's try it. Um, let's go with, uh, why don't you take a minute and do the next few on your own. Go. Now let's check our work. We've got x plus 9 times x minus 9. Now notice, the square root of x squared is x times, is, is x. So that would be x to the first power. How do I get x squared? It's x times x. If that power were different, my power would be different down here. So now, notice I've got something different. I've got a coefficient. So the square root of 9 is a 3. The square root of m is an m. And the square root of 121 is 11. So it's 3m. 11, 1's plus, 1's minus. Next one, keep it in this order. We've got 4 and 7k. 4 and 7k. And this is a plus and a minus. Now, I'm I want you to notice every time, it's a perfect square, a different sign, and a perfect square. If it's not a perfect square minus a perfect square, it's not the same. We don't factor it the same. The only th way we can factor that binomial is by... <clears throat> the only kind of binomial that can really be factored is if there's a GCF or if it's a, a difference of squares. So the next one would be K minus 4 times k plus 4. Now, be careful here. Look at this. What mistake did I make? What mistake did I make? If you notice, this is k to the fourth power. It's a higher degree polynomial. So that means, actually, look what I did. I really I messed that up in more ways than I can answer because it's not plus 4 minus 4. So let's go back. Okay, what mistake did I make? First of all, the square root of 4 is a 2. I'm sure you noticed that. Then what times what equals k to the 4th? That would be k squared. 1's plus, 1's minus. Okay, number 5. Ready? Guess what? 50 is not a perfect square, so there is no, um, you can't, it can't be factored. There's no common factor. Um, the next one, we're going to be 2x plus 7 and 2x minus 7. Okay, next one is 6y minus, uh, plus 1 and 6y minus 1. So remember, 1 is a perfect square. And last but not least, not factorable. Why? Because it's a sum of squares. It's not a difference. We said that this pattern is only for a difference of squares. It's only for a difference of squares. This is not a difference. This is a sum sign. Okay? This is a sum sign. So, um, remember that. We cannot factor a sum of squares. There's nothing that you can, when I multiply, oops, sorry. When I multiply a binomial times a binomial, there is, so let's say I got 4x plus 5, 4x plus 5, okay? That would give me a trinomial. 16x squared plus 25. My, in, my outer is plus 20x. My inner is plus 20x. And that makes 16x squared plus 40x plus 25. So if I did a, a minus and a minus, the same thing would happen. It would become 16x squared 
minus 40x plus 25. So we've tried, and if I do 4x plus 5 times 4x minus 5, okay, we are going to get what would be 16x squared, and then um, we know that it'll be 25, and the inner term is negative 20x, the outer, the outer term is negative 20x, the inner term is plus 20x, so they negate each other, and we just have this 16x squared minus 25. So there's no two binomials that will give us a sum of squares, okay? So this is not factorable, and if it's not a perfect square, it's not factorable. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start putting these together, okay? We're going to put these together. And yesterday, we learned about, we learned about our GCF factoring, okay? We learned about our GCF factoring. So before we ever do anything, the first step always is to check your GCF, okay? So what is the GCF? What could I divide out of both terms? That would be a 2, right? So if I divide 2 out of 2x squared, I'm left with x squared, right? Do factoring a 2, and then I'll be left with an x squared, and 2 divided by negative 50 is negative 25. And what do you know? So first I'm doing my GCF, sorry, my GCF factoring. And what do you know? It is, I'm left with what we call our difference of squares. So we break that down to 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 5 times x minus 5. Okay, next. Let's go. Now, what are we noticing about this binomial that's different than some of the others? Hopefully you're noticing that it's a higher degree binomial. Now, what that means is there's going to be more breakdown. These higher degree polynomials will have more breakdowns. So, first we're going to do, there, is there a GCF? It's always the question we ask. Okay, so... So if not, then we're going to break it down to m squared and m squared make m to the fourth, and I'm going to have a plus one and a minus one. Now, I always keep my one on the right side, my negative on the right side, in case I want to break that down more. Because remember, a sum of squares can't be broken down. But look what I'm left with, another difference of squares. So the directions here read, factor completely. If you do not factor completely, then it would be marked wrong. And so this one right here can be broken down to, so I'm going to factor it first, and I've got the m and an m. That makes m squared. I'm going to have a plus 1 and a minus 1. And so when I ask you to factor completely, this becomes your final answer. Okay, let's write this down with our notes. Okay, so here I've got a difference of squares. But then notice we have that difference of squares again. So hopefully you're having time to write that down. All right, so let's try a few. Okay, let's start with number one. I'd like to see this one. I'd like to see this one. Um, I want you to put it in the chat. We're not moving ahead. Everybody's at number one, and you are sending it to me personally. Okay, go. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's check it out. So we're doing three is the GCF. And I'm left with a difference of squares, y squared minus 9. 
So then I'm left with, I can break down that difference of squares to 3 times y plus 3 times y minus 3. Okay, number 2, go. Now let's check it. Notice this is a higher degree polynomial, so we're doing x squared plus 9, x squared minus 9. This can't be broken down, so I rewrite it, x squared plus 9. But this can be broken down to x plus 3 times x minus 3, and I am factored completely. Number 3 doesn't look like it's anything other than, G, than maybe GCF, but let's look. Once I take out the 5, which divides into both, then I'm left with m to the 6th minus 4. Oh, what do you know? I have a difference of squares. So 5, and this is going to break down to m to the 3rd. I'm going to get plus 2 and minus 2. Now, by the way, I couldn't break this down anymore, even if this number were a perfect square, because m to the third is not a perfect square. No number times itself equals m to the third. Okay, try number four. And I'm getting, here we go, let's go five. Can divide out of both. We're left with y to the fourth minus 16. I'm doing five times. It's a difference of squares. The root of y to the fourth is y squared plus 4 minus 4. Are we done? That's what you have to keep asking yourself. So I'm bringing down 5 times y squared plus 4, and we are still left with, I can break this down even more, to y plus 2, y minus 2. Okay. All right. And that, my friends, is the end of our slideshow.